I'm a small business, it's only me, but I had to start a new brand before my first one even took off. How can I add an email address of my second brand without paying for another license? So this person needs help with setting up an alias domain name for their Google Workspace account, or they might choose to add an add-on domain name. Now, when you've got a Google account and you have multiple brands, if you're a micro small business and you, it's just yourself or a couple of people, well, you can actually have multiple domain names and multiple business brands running in one Google Workspace account. And you only pay for one account, which is really great. Now, the easiest way to think about how the charges work for licensing in Google Workspace is to think about buckets of email. So if you have one bucket of email coming to your mailbox, you could have multiple email addresses in the Google world, they're called aliases. And those multiple aliases, as long as they're all being delivered to one bucket of email, which is your account, well, you only pay for one license because it's one license for each bucket of email. So if you've got multiple brands, multiple domain names, or even multiple email addresses that you wanna go by, well, you can have them all come to one bucket of email and you only pay for one license. Now, why might you do this? Well, if you're rebranding to a secondary brand and you want to use a different email domain name, well, you might decide to use this. If you have multiple emails for your business and you want it to appear a little bit bigger than it is, maybe if you're a one, two or three person business, well, you might have orders at or sales at or media at your business going to that same mailbox as well. Now, how do you set things up? Well, there's two places to set this up because there's two kinds of alias domains that you can create. So to access all the settings for our Workspace account, we're gonna to go to our admin console and that's admin.google.com. You need to be the administrator of the account, but if you set up the account, that's probably gonna be you. The first place we'll look at is setting up multiple email addresses for one person under the same domain because that's the easiest to explain. If I go into my directory here, I'm gonna find all the users for my domain name. And if you're a solo, per solo business, it's just gonna be one person. If you've got lots of staff, it's gonna be lots. So let's go ahead and look for my account here. And to configure aliases for this account, we're gonna to go to user information. And here we can add aliases. It says here, alternate email addresses and alias. So I'm gonna click and start adding aliases. Now, if I wanted orders at mybusiness.com to come here, I can add orders at, if I wanted media at mybusiness.com, I can add media here. You can see I've got a selection of multiple domain names. We're gonna come back to that and how to set those up. So we've got my different names here. I can have Peter at different domain names. I can even have completely alternate email addresses which will work from external and they'll all be delivered to my mailbox. I go ahead and I click save. Now that covers my incoming mail. I can send an email to any one of those addresses from an external email address and they're all gonna work. If I wanna send from those addresses as well, well, what I've gotta do is actually go into my email. So in my email, I've got to go to my Gmail settings. In my Gmail settings, I go to accounts and then you'll see here, send mail as, I need to add an additional email address. And maybe I wanna send from orders at testgenius.co. Oops, it's gonna ask to send a verification, which is gonna to go to me anyway. Oh, oops, I typed in order, not orders. Let's try that again. What? What happened there? Did I typo that? Is my, is my computer auto? Yeah, there we go, okay. I don't know what was going on there. Apple, Apple corrects my grammar sometimes, maybe it was that. Okay, cool. So you receive a test confirmation here that you need to approve. Once you've approved that, then orders at testgenius.co will work. So I've set up an additional email address here that's gonna come into my mailbox and this additional, this additional uh, user alias coming into my bucket of email is gonna work immediately from outside my business. Well, it should work immediately from outside my business. Let's go ahead and send another email, orders at testgenius.co, cool. And that should hopefully show up pretty much immediately. All right, we might give it a minute to do that. Okay, so that's how we set up individual aliases. What if we wanna set up an alias for the company? Or what if we wanna set up a whole new brand, right? A whole new domain name and different domain. Well, we wanna do that through our 
account and domain settings and that's in manage domains so you can see here i've got lots of different domains that have been added to my account here with each one of these different domains when i add them it's going to ask do i want to create a secondary domain or an alias domain now an alias domain makes your job easy if i've got peter at testgenius.co and i want to use test genius.co.uk it's going to automatically add that for every one of my users but if i want to have different users with different buckets of email using the new email domain well then i need to choose secondary domain now if you want to create multiple domains under one business you can have one umbrella Google Workspace account with multiple individual distinct domains sitting under it. And those multiple individual domains can have users that have buckets of email under each one of those different domains. And you could also have a combination of aliases as well. So if you wanna have a user that's got your first domain, but an alias from the second domain, and then your other user has a primary domain from the secondary one and a alias from the first one you can do any kind of combination there makes it makes it really easy so i think we covered how to set those up well enough the final step is once you've configured your additional domains when you're going to set up a user when you're going to set up a new user you can choose which domain name you want to have as their primary domain now if you've configured an alias domain each user is automatically going to get that second added domain added to them. The last thing that you might be interested to know is, can you change the primary domain? Yes, you can. When you set up an additional domain, you can click change primary domain and that will let you change to the new domain. It does say here, this is a complex task with multiple steps. Uh, it's not always recommended. And it's basically saying, hey, go add it as an alias. Now, this is the point where I tell you, if you're considering changing your primary domain name for your business, I would strongly recommend you consider having us manage the process for you. It's not a straightforward process. And even though you can click the button and just do it, there's some considerations and some things that can go wrong during the process, which can interrupt your business. And that's why we have a very affordable, very fast and easy service for us to hold your hand and do it the right way if you're interested in doing this for your business. Now, I have created a technical video on the channel explaining how to change domain names. If you search for that on the channel, you'll find that video. But my recommendation is still, if you're a business and you really wanna make sure there's zero downtime or zero chance of anything going wrong, send it to the people who've done it literally hundreds of times for small businesses. And for just a few hundred dollars, we'll get it done for you and very quickly as well. You can find that option in our quick fix menu on the website, and you can get access to that during business hours, either in Asia Pacific or the Americas time zones. So if you wanna change the primary domain name, that will mean that furthermore, all of your emails and all of your users will have a new primary domain name. You can still have multiple add-on domains. You can still have all of these secondary domains that allow you to set up different configurations of user accounts, but the primary account domain will have switched. And when you create new users, they're gonna to default to the new domain. If you've got uh, you know, groups and those kind of things, they're all gonna to default to the new domain as well. Okay, cool. I think I pretty much covered that one. That is pretty well done. If you need any help, you know what to do. Click the link below the video. If you need more help with what we've covered in this video, IT Genius provides support services to businesses all over the world with problems just like this. Click the link below to get started.